So, so my first question is, um, given that in the last year the number of FGM referrals to the Met has increased from 26 in 2012 to 69 referrals in 2013, why has the Met, and, and I suppose the CPS, been unable to bring any prosecutions under the legislation forbidding FGM? Now, I want to put on record once again that this legislation has been there since 1985. I remember it well. It was a piece of work I was involved in my youth before I had a grey hair. <laughs> and it is, a, I think, a shocking indictment that there has been no prosecution. So I want you to focus on that. Do, have you, do you feel that you're failing these young women, you and the CPS, as you have been unable to actually get anyone prosecuted? I think public authorities together have collectively um, not grabbed hold of this over 20 odd years as much as they should do. I think that's the, the evidence on that. Um, speaks for itself. I think the, of course, it is brought into sharper relief as the sort of population mix um, changes in London, and so um, the number of young people who are potentially at risk, who are from um, families and backgrounds where um, culture that might be seen as a good practice. So, so the, the threat is greater, um, but something we should have made more progress over the last over a long period. But what's stopping the Met? Um, what's stop, nothing stopping the Met at all. I mean, you'll have picked up from Keith the amount of determination and, and resource that we've thrown at it. Um, referrals don't make crimes. So some of those, many of those referrals are issues like um, a uh, sort of a, a woman who has um, had FGM from when she was younger before she came to this country and with children in this country and a concern expresses whether those children are at risk of um, the cultural practice being passed on, so to speak. Um, and that's obviously a safeguarding issue. That's something we talk about. But it doesn't create a, create a crime. So most of those referrals, there aren't crimes to investigate. There is safeguarding work to be done um, of them. And we've currently got about 10, I was looking my notes, about 10 cases with the CPS at the moment. We, uh, of, of the 20 cases in sort of last year or so, and that's a couple of years which have um, are, we think merit sort of looking at crimes and being investigated. Half of those have been referred to CPS, um, and they are tricky cases, and most of them are still with them. The, just in terms of looking at some of the, some of the barriers, so I say, historically, I don't think we've all done enough about it. We would like to get more referrals. I mean, we get, in the last four years, we've had fewer than 10 referrals a year from health. I know you'd like to get more referrals, but if you're doing nothing with the referrals you've got, if I can uh, push you on this, um, one of the triggers for greater confidence, more referrals, it's will be a case that is prosecuted. And so within our communities, on our streets now, because of you said the change in demography, um, and I, you know, I want to talk about 30 to 40 years, because I know that's yeah. how long it has been since um, agencies have been involved in this. Um, and I just wanted you to sort of um, to share with us um, like, do you think now the focus is, um, is more relevant through your Operation Limelight, you know, where we understand, and it's widely known, that uh, children now are taken abroad um, to have, um, uh, to, to be mutilated, but they are British children, so they're going to come back having been mutilated. What, what work are you doing there? And uh, is, is, are you doing enough in that area? Can we see some successes there yeah. with these criminals who are mutilating children being brought to justice? Uh, it is a very serious criminal offence, and I agree with your, um, your language. In the absence of having so many referrals, so we've got 10 cases with CPS at the moment, and um, I think it's highly likely there will be charges in the not-too-distant future on, on, on some of those cases. I'm optimistic on that. Um, but we're not just waiting for referrals. We've been pushing the agenda with partners, but we're not just waiting for that. So we've been doing um, preventative operations, sort of, so Operation Lion Light, um, based around airports at key times when um, uh, families go sort of, um, 
back to um, countries of origin for holidays, and we think there's a risk of children being taken for um, taken out of the country for this purpose. Um, we've run that several times at Heathrow, and we're looking to lead a national operation, to call it a national operation, doing that in other places. We're already getting feedback from communities that the fact that we've been doing those operations is making people um, think twice about their practice, which is, which is helpful. That's, that's anecdotal evidence, but it's good to see. Um, one of the operations that um, Heathrow generated, uh, generated two arrests, and that's an ongoing operation, which I can't speak about in detail. So we are actively trying to go out and find it. We've also made several appeals for information, because whilst we think most of this takes place out of the country, um, we do believe there are um, cutters in London, um, buried deeply in communities, and we are, keep pushing appeals, and we are desperate for that information from communities to, to, to follow through on. And we are determined to use covert tactics uh, as well. One of the challenges in some of the cases we've had in the past is this is – in my view, this is just as serious a crime as other serious types of child abuse. There is something socially different, though, in that in a child abuse case with sexual abuse, a victim is likely to want to give evidence against the parent or whoever did it. In these cases, um, the victims tend to feel it's awful, but it was horribly misguided from loving parents, and so they don't want to give evidence. So actually getting the evidence to prosecute, there are some extra dynamics that make it complicated in that regard, which is why we want to try and use proactive tactics and target the cutters. The second evidential issue, and you talked about people being taken out of the country, um, we think the legislation is flawed in terms of the threshold, in terms of how that works. The status for um, residents, so they don't have to be British citizens, um, they have to be, that the degree of res, long term residence that's required is a very, very high bar. Mm -hmm. And so you can have families settled for long periods in the UK mm -hmm. um, who are sufficiently settled, for example, to be entitled to benefits, mm -hmm. but their degree of settlement doesn't mean we can apply this criminal legislation to take them out of the country to uh, be FGM'd and brought back again. The threshold is set far, far too high. And that's a, that's a matter of concern to us, and we've raised that with, with government.